But Scott Garrett with us this morning. Full disclosure, he is my congressman. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. It's good to be here with you, and hearing all these other topics is quite it's fascinating. Different. I mean, we're a different kind of show, you've got to admit. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not... to think about what we could use those uh, laser drones for. You're, t you're talking about protecting your property. I think if you, if you lower the voltage a little bit, maybe you can get all the vermin that go to <laughs> yeah. all the, your shrubs and stuff around your house, just sort of knock well, them just out. Just get a house cat, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Let, no, no, let no, two no. house cats out. Well, you have to watch out that. for your house cat if you have one of these. Floating <laughs> right. The vermin that Congressman uh, uh, Scott Garrett is talking about are deer. Um, I didn't want to say. Don't say it. <laughs> You'll lose Herman, votes. I thought would be a better term. <laughs> Edward Snowden, traitor or patriot? What is he? Sure. So it, 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 what's most disturbing is the level of the information that has come out. When it first get, when it was first discovered and disclosed, uh, we had some top secret briefings, and it was like, well, this is about a bunch of data that was going to be released by him, and it wasn't that bad. And of course, over time, we've seen that it's this much that's out there. Uh, what's even more troubling, though, and what my constituents say, how does this impact upon regular people, is that the continuation by the administration, by Washington, of just collecting all of this data on us, on our cell phones, on our telephones, well, what happened? Where do you stand on that? Uh, I, I'm troubled, and I'm troubled by not only what's being done over here by the NSA, but you know we're a financial, you're a non-financial yeah. program. What we deal with is the CFPB, the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau. They are collecting even uh, additional data on your mortgage information, on your uh, loan information, on your credit card information. 900 million uh, credit card uh, information is being collected over there without any oversight whatsoever. So the public is concerned about this. It's a very big issue for young voters, I, I think, in particular. I think so. Carlos, would you stay with us just a couple of minutes? Sure. I've got to break away to do some business on McDonald's of all things. Uh, McDonald's have got very weak sales, I think. I take it, Nicole, that they're blaming the weather. Tell me. One of the reasons for the U.S. losses that they've been seeing, McDonald's stock is down about a half a percent. Same store sales altogether globally down 0.3 percent. But in the U.S., the weather certainly was part of the problem. They talk about dynamics being difficult. Uh, abroad, it was a mixed bag. In Europe, they did well in the U.K. and France, weaker in Germany, and in Japan, a little weakness. So they are trying to figure out how to get it just right, to offer the right amount of menu items, but not have it be so confusing that it slows down service. Yeah. And that is what they are also having to contend with. It's the fast food operations and the mid-level lower check operations. Uh, fast casual, I think it's called, isn't and it? And Burger King, by the way, today hits a new record high. Okay. I mean, just like a kick I was going to say, this is an economic right? indicator of a, an economy that's, where there's not that much earning power and people not spending that much money in those kind of restaurants. All right, McDonald's down a little. Let me get back to Congressman uh, Scott Garrett. To Obamacare, Unite Here, now that's a union representing maybe 300,000 low-wage hospitality workers. They claim, there's a report from this union, that because of Obamacare's much higher costs for insurance, their wages will be cut by up to five bucks an hour. Congressman, I'm not going to ask you what you think of five bucks an hour. That seems a little far-fetched to me. Mm. But it is another hit on Obamacare. Sure. They just keep coming. They just keep on coming. And, of course, you'd like to have someone from the union here and say, well, where were they when Obamacare was coming down the road? And a lot of us were predicting that it actually would be a hit on your, uh, on your paycheck. Um, we all know the uh, adage is saying, that what the president was saying, that if you want to keep your policy, you can keep, your, you can keep it under Obamacare. If you want to keep your hospital, you can keep it. If you want to keep your doctor, you can keep it. All that's true. But one people thing that people often forget is the other promise that he made was that you're um, costs would go down by $2,500. Now, of course, for these folks, the costs are not going down. They're losing $5. Right. And I'll give you one personal story, sure. my own, and that is it took me four days of going onto the computer. You know, members of Congress have to be in Obamacare. A lot of people don't know that. I was on all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, four days. Finally, I got into Obamacare. I signed up back in November for it. A couple weeks ago, I got my first statement, my first premium. My premiums did not go down by $2,500. My premiums have gone up by $2,500. So we took that hit. People all across the country are taking that hit. These union employees are taking the hit. But this is what we predicted from day one. Now, on the issue of repeal of Obama, sure. we just want you to listen into an exchange between Senator Ted Cruz and ABC's Jonathan Carl. We're going to roll that, and you can listen, Congressman. Okay. You honestly think there's a chance that you could get Obamacare repealed? Every word, as you say. Every with single Obama word. in the White House. Uh, you know what's what's funny, John, is the, is the media treats that as a bizarre proposition. Well, it is. Okay, well, there's two sides of the opinion there. Can, can Congress, with President Obama in the White House, surely 
you cannot repeal Obamacare. You can't do it, can well, you? Well, the, the upside on that is the votes that we've been taking recently. When we, Republicans started in this to try to repeal Obamacare, we got zero Democrats. But as we continue to pass legislation in the House, send it over the, to the Senate, where all good bills go to die, of course, um, we are getting more and more and more. I think the last time around 22 Democrats actually joined with Republicans, bipartisan effort, to through. do so. Think, come on, think this through. If it goes to the Senate, if the vote in the Senate, yeah, it well, would fail. And even if you accuse... I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, That's Congressman. Okay. You're, you're a good guy. But well, if they, you. <laughs> you're, I'm, I'm your constituent. Likewise, I'm sure. Okay, right. But if it, they get more and more support in the Senate, maybe then it would be passed. The President would veto it. And you don't have 75 votes in the Senate to override a presidential veto. Well, well that, that is true. Um, but I think what where uh, Cruz was going on this was this, that... Um, was what? Oh, that at the end of the day, what politicians are most concerned is not their ideology, even though there is a strong left-wing ideology when it comes to Obamacare, but it's about them getting reelected. And as we see, the tide is going in America is against Obamacare. We see where the president's polls are this against the president on Obamacare. Maybe we'll get to the point where he says he can actually agree with us on the legislation, just what he just did last week, and that is to suspend it, postpone it for a period of time. If we can do that, that would be a great step in the right direction. Good luck with that, Congressman yes, Scott Garrett, Republican, Republican New Jersey. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good Appreciate it. All right.